Hey everyone, Brad from DevOps Journey here, and today I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how I use get through VS Code. Now, a lot of you probably just use get through the command line, but I find myself using VS Code a lot, and using the get GUI within it is actually pretty convenient. So I'll just walk you through a really simple project that I have here, and how I can manage the get functions through it. Oh, and one thing that I'll mention is I probably do have a couple extensions installed. You probably don't need this, but if you want everything to look the same as mine, it looks like I have these three get modules installed. I have get history, get lens, and get project manager. So if something looks different on my side, it's probably because of one of these extensions that I have installed. So let's go on over to here, which is the source control. And the first thing it says is, do you want to initialize the repository? So this is your get init command. So I'll just go ahead and hit initialize repository. And now you can see the three files there. So these three files match these ones up here in my explorer. And it actually gives you a nice visual representation of how get works. So you can see that it detects three files with changes in it that it's never committed. So I have the option to individually add them. And you can see the changes that have been made here when I click on it, it opens both sides. So it was originally empty and now it's just adding this one line and then the same for everything here, right? So I can add them individually or I could go up to changes and just stage all the changes. So you can see that they're no longer organized under changes, they're now staged. And uh, the next thing you wanna do is commit these changes. So you can just write a commit message here. So I'll just write first commit here, and then hit this check mark. And that's it, it committed all the changes. Now, if I were to change one of these files here, and just take a world and just have it say hello, you should see, yeah, it refreshes there, that I have one change. So I can go here whenever I'm ready to commit my changes. And again, I can have a look, and you can see that it changed hello world just to hello. So that looks good. I'm going to add it and commit it and say changed main.py for my commit message, and I'll commit it. Now, if I want to push this to GitHub, I can just go here and you can see that I have all my advanced get options. So I can do like a push and pull and uh, remote. So I haven't added the remote repository yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go add remote. And I already have a repository set up here. So I'm just going to grab the URL and put it here. And it didn't like that probably because it didn't have get at the end. So I'm going to go control shift P, pull that up and I'll just go get remote and you can see the option is there let's paste that in again go get and you can see it auto completes there oh and wants the remote name oh it wants the remote name that's what the issue is so i'm going to call it main just to be politically correct here and uh and uh there we go that should be added now all I need to do is push it out. So I'll go push. How the fuck does this work? So the next thing to do is add your actual GitHub repository so you can push the code out there. So to do that, you can go to these three dots and then uh, go to remote and then add remote. 
And I have a URL ready here. This GitHub repository is already created. So I'm going to go add remote from URL. And let's be politically correct here and name this main. And the remote should now be added. And you can hit the ellipse sign again. And then go to push. And then push to. And the option is there. So you can have multiple locations you want to push to. I usually just have main. So let's go ahead and hit that. And you can see that it pushes out there. Now if we go ahead and look at the repository. So you can see it's there. So this is just a really convenient way to use get. And you could still use commands like if you go to new terminal, you still have all the get commands available to you. It's just convenient to use it through the GUI. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to show. Um, usually I initialize my repositories just from the terminal anyways. I'm only really finding myself using this for staging the changes and doing my commits. And then I usually just type my get push that way. It's pretty rare I go up into these options, but it's kind of nice to have. Um, also another trick is to go control shift P and then just type get and it has all your get options there. So that's available to you as a shortcut if you want to use that. Oh, and now that I mention it, there is one more feature that I do kind of use pretty often, and that's this add to get ignore file. So I find myself highlighting files and then going to this hotkey and hitting add to get ignore. So let's go ahead and check that out. If we had like a secrets file, You could go here and then uh, get add to get ignore, right? Automatically creates a get ignore, adds the secrets file there. So that's pretty convenient as well. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you're using get with Visual Studio Code, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.